Yo, what's up guys, you're Jinkin' Ink here. Uh, this video is all about some fighting game terms you guys may not know about. Um, there's a couple of them here that uh, I'm going to go over, including one that's like... I don't know, a lot of people think they kind of know what it is, and they might not, or uh, something like that. <laughs> Anyways, um, there's three of them here. The first one I'm going to go over is called Fuzzy Guarding. Um, and basically this is when you can block in a certain pattern um, to block a mix-up. So let's say I'm, take, I'm using Shinnok for an example here because he has an overhead option and a low option in this string. Uh, the low option is unsafe so you don't see them go for it too much unless they kind of see that you don't know how to fuzzy guard it and then they're just going to mix you up the whole time. Um, Basically, fuzzy guarding means they have a low option and an overhead option, but they aren't the same frames. So one might be faster than the other, so if you block in a certain pattern, you can block them both no matter what option they do. Um, so we're going to... I got him on a playback here. So this is what I got him doing. He's got this string, the first time he does it is low, first time he does it is overhead. So basically... Um, I block low and I release block to high at a certain point. And if I time it right, it doesn't matter which option he'll do, I'll block them both. I timed it wrong that time. I'm blocking low, now he's going to do the overhead. And the overhead is much slower than the low, and that's why it works. So as long as you block low and you know when to release a block on the low and block high, then, you know, some things like, uh, I mean, this doesn't really, I mean, I know, I know recorded this so I obviously know what's coming, uh, but you can kind of do it in, in the lab and kind of see how it works, uh, as, you know, as a, as a character and whatnot. Um, but that's like the, uh, the, like the main part of it, you know, um, is you can block both of them with just one certain blocking pattern and you have to look at the frame data and you have to know the frame data for that you have to know that one is slower than the other if both mix-ups are the exact same frames then you're not going to be able to um, fuzzy guard it you have to guess um, but in this case the low is much faster than the overhead option so I block low first and then I release the block button to block high and then I would block both options successfully uh, take some getting used to and and you know take some practice and whatnot um, but a characters like this like Shinnok if you think that it's a 50 50 and you don't know that you can fuzzy guard it uh, Shinnok players are gonna blow you up for it so uh, the second option that I wanted to show you um, was whiff punishing and someone asked about this in the last video so so you'll see Shinnok jumps at me and I try and punish with a back two. Back two doesn't hit him. Now, if I walk backwards, he does not hit me with his jumping punch. And then the back two will punish. This is punishing the recovery frames. So if you look at a move um, on the move list, so you'll see there's recovery frames um, and active frames and startup frames. I'm not going to go into that right now. I just want to talk about the recovery frames. So the recovery frames are how long it takes your move to recover, and this is really good when you whiff a move. So you'll see um, my standing one, for example, our recovery frame is 14 frames, so I can block really fast after it. Um, my, back one, my back one has more recovery frames. Like, as soon as I do that move, I'm holding the block button, and you can see how much longer it takes him to block after he does that move than with that one. So... That's where whiff punishing comes in, because you're not punishing actually the move being blocked, you're punishing the frames that stands to recover. And this is really good for jumping punches, as you can see, because when they whiff, and of course whiffing means they don't connect, um, then you have those all those recovery frames to punish it. And as, if it hits, my back two is locked. I can only punish it when it whiffs. So, if you think they're going to jump in, like they're going to the range with a jumping punch, walk backwards, and then you can back two. I just got hit right there like an idiot. Bam. Back two. I use Liu Kang for this because he whiff punishes very well with that move. 
That move is awesome. More Liu Kang players should use it. Uh, I don't see it used as a high level. Um, and this kind of leads into the third thing that I wanted to talk about, which is footsies. And uh, footsies is something that everybody likes to talk about and not really a whole lot of people know about. It's it's pretty complicated. I can't really explain it in one certain way, but it's basically like spacing, um, using moves that recover quickly, like uh, like I'll, th I'll throw out, uh, you know, like Liu Kang standing one or something like that, because if they try and run in, that'll hit them, but it recovers fast enough that they can't really punish it. Um, you know, they can, like, uh, standing right outside of his jumping range. So if he wants to jump at me, I'm playing right here, and you see, like, I'm kind of walking back and forth. Let's say he wants to jump at me. And I'm right outside of his jumping range, ready to whiff punish that. But I'm kind of staying right around here and I'm kind of coming in thinking that I might be in range and then I back out of range. You know, it's playing the spacing game. You know, you can also do it with, with fireballs and zoning and stuff like that as well. Um, just, it's really, really just spacing is really all it is. Um, having good spacing, knowing when to use certain moves at certain times, that kind of thing. And, uh, you know, again, You'll see me do it with Quan. Sometimes I'll do like the back one or the standing four or something like that. Uh, just just to control that space and keep them out of that space. Because both of those moves, they're pretty good. I can hit confirm them. And uh, they have decent recovery frames where I can't really be punished for doing it. So, you know, I'm, I'm standing here and coming in and out doing this. Because right now, right where I'm at right now, I'm outside of his jump in range. So if he jumps at me, I just walk backwards, and I react to that, and then I just back to it to punish it. Um, if I decide that I want to come in, I can just run up and do a combo like that, or I can just run up and back to, which has good range, um, and it's also pretty safe with the pushback and stuff. Uh, this is a big reason why I like Liu Kang, is he controls this space really well. Um, even though he doesn't really have a whole lot of like long-reaching normals, a lot of the stuff will whiff. Um, you kind of have to play right outside the range and then run in and kind of go with something or run in you get that and if you get that you get the knockdown but this isn't really a Liu Kang tutorial but if you're a Liu Kang player hey there you go um, so that's basically it guys the three things that I really wanted to talk about um, hope you like this video hope you learned something maybe you didn't I don't know hashtag bonehawks and all that stuff and uh, we'll see you guys in the next video